How do you find the center of a circle? Well, you could try guessing. The problem with that approach is there are an infinite number of points inside the circle. Even if you restrict your attention to a teeny tiny region near the center, there are still an infinite number of points to choose from. The probability of your guessing the right point from an infinite number of choices is 0%, so this is not a reasonable way to answer the question. In fact, it's kind of a shameful solution. I can't believe you even suggested it. A more respectable approach is to find the equation of this circle. In analytic geometry, you learn that a circle is the set of solutions to an equation of the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the point hk is the center and r is the radius. The equation of a circle has three parameters, h, k, and r. To find these three parameters, you need to know three points on the circle. If you have only one or two points, that's not enough. If you have only one point, there are an infinite number of circles through that one point. If you have just two points, there are still an infinite number of circles through the pair of points. But if you have three points and they're not on the same line, then there is one and only one circle that passes through all three points. In this case, you can find the center of the circle by solving for h, k, and r. To do this, plug the coordinates for each of the three points into the equation of the circle. You now have a system of three equations with three unknowns, h, k, and r. Remember, x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3 are not variables, they're numbers. Once you solve this system of equations for the unknown parameters h, k, and r, then you found the center of the circle. But here, we only have a circle. We don't know the coordinates of any point on the circle. This may seem like a pretty hopeless situation, and it is if you try to use analytic geometry to find the center of the circle. But you can do it using Euclidean geometry. And here's how. First, draw a chord on the circle. Any chord will do. Now, suppose we did know the center of the circle. Then, if we connect the two endpoints of the chord with the center, we get an isosceles triangle. Now, look what happens if we draw an altitude for this triangle through the center of the circle. The altitude cuts the isosceles triangle into two right triangles. Both of these right triangles have the same hypotenuse r, and these legs are identical. So by the Pythagorean theorem, the other legs are equal to each other. This means the altitude is a perpendicular bisector of the chord. In other words, the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of a circle. It's this fact that will allow us to find the center of the circle. Now, constructing the perpendicular bisector of a line segment is a classic geometric construction. If you don't know how to do this, or if you've forgotten, then check out our video on how to bisect line segments. We're now ready to find the center of the circle. To do this, we draw a second chord. Next, construct the perpendicular bisector of this new chord. Since each perpendicular bisector passes through the center, the point of intersection of the bisectors is the center of the circle. Let's summarize this technique. Given any circle, you can find the center by drawing two chords, and then constructing the perpendicular bisectors for each chord. Since all perpendicular bisectors pass through the center, the point where the two bisectors intersect is the center of the circle. By the way, earlier I said that you can draw any two chords. That's not entirely correct. If you draw two chords which are parallel, then they have the same perpendicular bisector, so they intersect in an infinite number of points. This wouldn't help us very much. So be careful to pick two chords which are not parallel.